Welcome to the Sankofa Pan-African series. Please support us through Patreon and by buying me coffee um, so we can continue to bring you this series. Um, subscribe if you have not yet done so. And please turn on your notification buttons so you know when we have new um, episodes for you. And of course, share our videos with all your contacts. Born in Zimbabwe, Dr. Sipiwe Gloria Lovo is a writer, filmmaker, and an academic with a doctorate from Stanford University. She is the writer of a trilogy of novels, The Theory of Flight, The History of Man, and The Quality of Mercy. She won the Sunday Times Fiction Prize in 2019 and the Yale University's 2020 Windham Campbell Prize. We will be talking to her about these three seminal novels. Theory of Light Prologue. On the 3rd of September, not so long ago, something truly wondrous happened on the Beaufort Farming Estate. At the moment of her death, Imogen Zula Nyoni, Jeannie, was seen to fly away on a giant pair of silver wings. And at the very same moment, her heart calcified into the most precious and beautiful something the world onlookers had ever seen. A few had already been chosen to witness this event. However, most of you have eyes that are not for beauty to see. And because of this, you will not believe that such a truly amazing phenomenon did take place. It is because some of you will have doubt, and those of you who do not have doubt will be curious that the story is choosing to be told. Like any event, what happened to Jeannie did not happen in a vacuum. It was the result of a culmination of genealogies, histories, teleologies, epistemologies, and epidemiologies, of ways of living, remembering, seeing, knowing, and dying. In other words, the story of what happened to Jeannie on the Beaufort Farm and Estate on the 3rd of September is also the story of how Bain's deity in a bid to quench his wanderlust, walked into the Indian Ocean, of how Prudence and Goma learned how to build character, of how Galite Gumede shot down an airplane, and in, so, in doing so created a race of angels, of how Elizabeth Nyoni sealed her fate with the turn of an ankle, of how Dingani Masulu came to be haunted by the blue violet flowers on his mother's dress, of how Tanji Hadebe looked into the distance as though it held a future in which she was not particularly interested, of how Crystal Masugu at puberty welcomed guilt as her constant companion, of how for Marcus Masugu, love happened under a jacaranda tree while he was listening to a story about swimming elephants, of how Valentine Tanaka became a hunchback with a heart of gold, of how Jesus came to be saved, and of how the Beaufort farm in the state knew exactly what to do with its sacrificed darlings. Welcome, Sipiwe, to yeah. an African series. Um, so in the theory of uh, of uh, flight, the first book of your of your trilogy, you intertwine stories with several um uh, uh, several generations. You 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 intertwine your stories with several generations. Um that have very significant historical effects. Mm -hmm. So how did you balance the, the personal narratives with a broader mm -hmm. historical context? Because I know from, you know, from working on, on a novel with a similar structure that it's, I, I actually have to rein myself back, you know, mm -hmm. allowing the historical context to overwhelm um, yes. the story that I want. So I, I really admire that about, about this novel. So please share your... <laughs> okay. Um, so for me, the, the theory of flight uh, is on some levels really about thinking about the things that affected my generation. So my generation of Zimbabweans were born towards the end of what was the Civil, Civil War in then Rhodesia. Uh, mm -hmm. which led to the independence, which became the country of Zimbabwe. Um, 
And so to have been born in that time, I think you become very aware <laughs> that you're born in a historical moment, right? Um, yeah. And then we also had to live through um, what happened after independence, the HIV crisis, and then also became part of what became the Zimbabwean diaspora. So all these huge events, um, historical events for my country were very much personal for us. They were very much um, like touchstones in our own lives. Um, and so I think I have always been fascinated um, by history, maybe because I'm very much aware that, you know, personal history and like the larger history are intertwined. Um, and actually, uh, as much as people create the events that make history, we are also shaped by those events, right? Yes. So it's sort of like the symbiotic relationship that happens and it's reciprocal. Uh, and so for me, it was important to show both of that, how people actively change history and how those histories in turn change the people. And it's this back and forth. And you're right. I think it's very difficult, especially if you love history. Yes. To know, <laughs> to know when you <laughs> <laughs> Um But I think the, the, the important thing for me was to, to, to always remember that I was telling a story about people and how about how people were relating to this one particular character who is called Jeannie and how she was changing their lives. So mm. in whatever historical context, that was the story, right? And so the history helps tell the story, yeah. but that's the actual story. Um, <laughs> so for me, that was always important to remember is that this is about the characters and the history is fantastic and it's really about the characters yeah, um, yeah. so I think that helps that yeah. helps and, and another thing I find you know fascinating is also the fact that you use magical realism you know to tackle complex uh, issues um mm -hmm. through the story of Ginny um um issues like um colonialism independence gender violence mm -hmm. and, and all of that and I think it serves a uh, it makes the uh, the novel all the more powerful so mm. can you share with us how you came you know to decide on using that style because your style changes in subsequent novels yes, <laughs> um so I think one thing that I love about being a writer is that I can always try different genres um and so like when I started with the theory of flight I always say this I didn't write magical realism, right? People say that's what I did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm always like, no, that's not what I did. Um, How do you explain this, you know, <laughs> this light, this egg? <laughs> yes, yes, this golden egg, this hatching, yes, this child, yes. yes. Um, so for me, really, it's it's re it was really a means to capture how people tell stories. And I think... You and I know that when you come from oral um, storytelling yeah. traditions, these things happen, right? Yes. Animals talk, people fly, anything yes. is possible. Yes. And so um, for Nothing me... Nothing is off limits. <laughs> no, the imagination is like anything goes. Yes. Um, <laughs> and so I wanted to definitely capture that. I knew from also being a person who reads literature and has studied literature that people would think it was magical realism. But I grew up with stories printed in newspapers about ghosts that would, you know, uh, entice men and this and this was like reported in the newspaper. I know. And so like that line between fiction and reality. Very just was not there yeah <laughs> oh thank you um yeah, yeah and yeah, yeah. And also your, your characters you know they're, they're complex you know um because you can find ways to put them in uh circumstances where they have to make tough choices um and uh, one example and i hope i'm pronouncing the name right is a becky temba this character, yes. uh, which starts out idealistic with idealistic intentions, but is co-opted by the regime. Mm. So what do you hope your readers will take away about the nature of human resilience in a, uh, as you state it out, in, in, as, as it's, um, it comes off in, the uh, in your novel, The Theory of Light? Mm. I think for me, the important thing about 
understanding yourself as a political human being. We, we have so many things as human being. One of those things is political. Yeah. Is yeah. that, you know, you have always to be willing to change when circumstances change, right? And so, and that the thing that you may be aligned with in the beginning may not always have the same values that you have as you go forward. And I think this is an important thing to stress, especially for those of us who inherited a certain kind of nationalist narrative about mm -hmm. history and a very nationalist history, right? In, in that, you know, after independence, you need to be very careful because maybe the reasons why you fought together are no longer there as you progress through the post-colonial moment, right? And I think people have to be constantly negotiating that political self. I think, you know, he starts, I don't know, a lot of the characters in the novel all are going through this in different ways. They're all having to face the side of themselves. Like, where do we stand? For instance, the, you know, the, the Masugus a, a family in the novel are avowedly apolitical, right? Which is not possible because the, 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 the situation that they're in is forcing them constantly yeah. to choose something, right? Um, and so I think we are through Begatim by realizing that, you know, the idealism that a lot of post colonies start with yeah. doesn't really last long. Mm. And it is up to us to choose when to shift gear as the people, right? Yeah. Uh, to shift gears. Um, so, you know, and he is a great example, I think, of someone who is so idealistic, doesn't see it when it's happening. When he realizes what's happening, he's already too mired in the whole thing. Oh. And he has to find it in himself. And I think this is an underlying theme of the whole novel, where you have to find it in yourself to be the kind of person you want to be, the oh. self that you want to be. And he has to find what that is for him. And I think this is a lesson for all of us, you know, yeah. even beyond politics, we have to yeah. struggle within ourselves to get to where we want to go and to be the people that we want to be. Yeah, the challenge is always to be aware, you know, that we need to be introspective, question yes. our own instincts question, yes. you know and then yeah 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 which which make is seg helps us segue nicely into uh the history um of okay. man 